black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, so today we come in with the Michelin three star handmade pasta for my friend and chef, Mr. Boyardee. <laughs> We're really coming in with the fancy stuff today. But for real, it's a, it's a childhood throwback, a little trashy childhood throwback on a minus 25 to 30 day. It warms the soul. But uh, once again, like the craft dinner video, there's memories tied to this. So we'll do it. We get into it. Now, have I ever had ranch on this? No. Did I add a bunch of mozzarella cheese? Yes. Um, do I have Texas toast that's garlic breadified? Of course. Do I have chinis in the cut? I do. So let's eat. We're just doing a water today as well. But uh, this is a nice little, just like a throwback memory meal uh, with a possible twist, but I don't think it's going to be very good. Anyways, let's just move this toast to not leaning tower of thumbnail. Maybe we'll just put it in the corner here and go in for a starter cheesy bite. I mean, it looks, the cheesy element of it looks, soups, soups good. Now, speaking of soup, it is a little soupy. I did, uh, it came out of the can kind of thick. Sauce came a little thick, so I put a little bit of water in here, but uh, it's definitely a bit soupy, but that's neither here nor there. No big deal. I hopefully this doesn't burn my mouth. Perfect. Perfect temp. Okay, so like I said, good meal on a cold, cold day. It is a cold, cold day around here. I know what you're thinking. Are you really eating Chef Boydie right now? Here's the thing. The meat is questionable at best. However, I've eaten it many times in my life. I've certainly never got sick or had a problem with it. So we march forward in a proven track record, bravery and confidence that it's all good, baby. Now I'm gonna be transparent. I have a tendency to get addicted to these kind of elementary schoolish lunches because there's just so much nostalgia tied, but also weirdly the sauce, this, the, this sauce tastes so good. <laughs> like I authentically like it. It's very unique. So it is what it is. Very good, is what I'm trying to say. Perhaps not good for you, but delicious. Chini time. I'm actually gonna try the chini with a taste of ranch. I just wanna see what this is like. I've never done this before. Something tells me it's not really gonna be all that great, but we give it a go. But yes, this actually transports me right back to my grandma's in the summertime. Tell me why I was eating super hot ravioli in the summertime. I don't know. But this is very reminiscent with my grandma. She used to uh, hook me up with raviolis a lot. <laughs> I 
it's weird too because I've tried. I think they have they have spaghetti, they have the beefaroni and that. For me, the ravioli is, is just the the king, the winner, the, takes takes the crown. But I definitely do have a soft spot in my heart for these style of foods. Like, for example, um, Pillsbury mini pizzas. I love those things. I don't know why. But I do. You microwave them and they get all kind of doughy. Like a little bit moist and soggy. For some reason, that's awesome. All right, the verdict is in, the ranch, it doesn't really match. It's not a good match. However, this has nothing to do with ranch, but I have something to tell you. Is that I know I profess in the past that I'm not really a true crime kind of guy. I don't really, like it's, I don't go nuts for it, but if the right story is intrigues, I'll get in. So I'm kind of perusing around Netflix. And at a certain point, you just like, you're on Netflix and you're like, literally everything on here sucks. Like there's just nothing. It's like all pretty much seemingly garbage. But I caught this one title called The Staircase. And it is a uh, true crime, like real ass documentary. It's 12 episodes in length. They're long as shit. And it's like a real life documentation of this guy who's like wealthy, him and his wife, they're wealthy. It's like his second or third wife. He's got a blended family with multiple children from different wives and this wife. And uh, he's on trial for basically her murder. Now I don't know what happens yet because I'm six deep. Right now I'm halfway through. But it's so thorough. It shows like exactly how long and exhausting a case like this is. Like all the specialists that they bring in, all the courtroom activities, all the behind the scenes, like him with his uh, legal counsel, you know, off, not off the clock, but like in the office and uh, just discussing things and, and, going over their strategies and shit and then also them watching the news and having like uh, Nancy Grace and all the all these people just misrepresent everything that they're doing they're just twisting their the narrative and their words and um, it's just so interesting to see like the attorneys and the lawyers aspect of it and watching them present evidence to the live jury and stuff like incredibly real life fashion and uh anyways this dude basically he's claiming that his wife fell down the stairs but things don't really add up in terms of her injuries but they also kind of do add up in terms of her injuries it's a lot to explain about like everything that happened, but to me, he looks mad suspect. And he was up to some shady ass um, sexual activities, bisexual activities on the side of his marriage. Um, and his children that he has now, like his daughters and stuff, are not his real blood daughters. They're the daughters of his other wife from Germany who died in like almost the exact same fashion, but 
that one wasn't like taken that seriously. He didn't like just I don't know what really came of that one. I think he just kind of got away with it or whatever, but He's got two dead wives. Both died basically the exact same way. So, anyways, I'm on episode six. It's from like early 2001. 2002 or 2002. I don't know. Anyways, it's very compelling. It's definitely a, a long haul watch. But it like it gripped me so i'm watching it but i'm doing everything i can to not google the verdict because like i just want to know like what happens to the guy but at the same time i'm just like nah i gotta stick this out i gotta like i gotta take this in truly how it's supposed to be taken and i gotta just commit to the watch because like i said minus a trillion here gets dark at 5 30 <laughs> stays dark till 8 a.m 8 30 it's like 30 days a night here you know what i mean So I'm going to take it in and see what happens. His lawyer, I don't know, he's, he has like the star quality about him as a lawyer. He just seems like such, such the guy who would be a lawyer. And uh, I like the lawyer. However, I can't tell as of quite right yet, but like, I feel like this dude's going down. But it also seems like he didn't do it really. As per the evidence presented so far. So it is really mysterious. But I feel like he may go down. Like this went down. All the way down. <laughs> okay. Trashy, nostalgic, childhood classic with a twister ranch and some chinis. Like I said, I just have like a soft spot for sometimes some stuff like this. Some kind of like those childhood, like simple foods. But there's something secret about the sauce. You can't deny that it's a delicious sauce. You just can't deny it. So, till the next one, you know what to do. Don't tell me what happens in this movie or documentary uh, eat good live well and stay true Peace. if you like this content please like comment and subscribe as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel thank you for watching eat good live well and stay true